Hi guys, I'm Rain Yin Zhang, a master's student at Columbia University studying statistics and machine learning. Today, I'm going to talk about how to get the data you need for analytics and how to clean them. In most scenarios, the big data that you need for an analytics task you want to perform is not actually sitting there. You have to put it in, put it together, and do some cleaning to make it usable. In this lecture, we will show an example of acquiring and wrangling data by extracting and integrating open web data. Our goal is to introduce the basic data structures used in data science, then show what is involved in getting remote, semi-structured, and structured data into a form that we can now use in visualization, descriptive statistics, or prediction. Along the way, we introduce the basics of web crawling and HTML parsing, XPath extraction, and the relational algebra. We then illustrate data integration and wrangling issues, including nulls, joins, cleaning rules, and approximate matching. Some of the terms may seem unfamiliar to you right now, but hopefully you can have a clearer understanding of what they are after these videos. A typical machine learning course starts with the data in a giant spreadsheet or table over which the analytics task is for performed. In this table, each row is an observation. For example, a customer or a purchase. And the columns represent features such as quantity or the price. Using this, we can perform various types of computations such as reports like how many purchases are there by region for each quarter. In the 90s, this was called big data and the data warehouses were designed to create these type of reports. Things have advanced since then. Just showing spreadsheets and reports is not that interesting anymore and may not convey meaning quickly. Data scientists therefore turn to visualization nowadays to understand the data and a number of great tools have been designed to put this into the hands of practitioners and enable things like interactive, interactive visualizations. Most people focus on the last box in this slide. It, it is classifiers. It looks at new data and makes predictions about what it is or where it is going. That's the big picture view. But if you talk to people who are actually working at data science companies, there is a lot that goes on before you get to this spreadsheet. There is a journey from the raw data to the structure form. And this is the focus on this lecture. So let's start with three basic algebra, uh, uh, with three basic abstractions of structured data. The data that we spoke about on the previous slide is an example of tables or relationship. Tables are available in most popular languages used in data science. In Python pandas, R and PySpark, they are called data frames. A data frame is a table with positions on the rows and names on fields. Tables are also the fundamental concept in relational databases where they are also called relations. A relation is a table but doesn't pay attention to order so there are no positions on rows. This is a small difference, so we would just assume for now that relations, data frames, .csv files are all the same thing, tables. The second type of structured data are arrays and matrices. We will see them a lot more of lately, later. In arrays, rows are still observations and columns are still features, but columns are indexed rather than names, named. More importantly, rather than every column potentially having a different type, for example, name is a string while weight is integer, all columns must have the same type. Apart from that, there is no huge difference between a two-dimensional array and a table. The third type of structured data that we will again see more of later when we deal with web data, XML objects, JSON data, etc., is nested. 
data. It's represented by dictionaries. Dictionaries have key value pairs where the value can be simple, it can be a string, integer, or a list of values, or a nested dictionary. So many public data sets are released by the gov that are that are released by the government in, in JSON format. This data can be split split up into subcomponents, which again begin to look like tables. For this lecture, we will going to focus on tables. In general, we are going to pull data in, in from wherever it lives, which is usually remote and not on, our, not on our laptop. And we turn it into tables. For example, we may need to analyze text or linked HTML files, looking for patterns to extract the entities we are interested in. When we're pulling data from a remote database, or import .csv or .json files, somehow we have to get raw data into multiple tables. And then there is a step in which we combine the tables into a unified table. There are a lot of tricks involved in integrating and cleaning the data figuring out what fields you need and whether the data you, is from different fields have to be combined to create the data that you need for the downstream analysis. So let's see an example of structured data in the context of web data task. Suppose we're interested in knowing the typical age of CEOs of major companies. How can we do this using Jupyter Notebook on your laptop? Suppose we have a file of companies and categories and need to find some authoritative data about CEOs. It turns out that there is a list of companies and their CEOs on Wikipedia, which we're going to assume authoritative, authoritative and up-to-date, but it doesn't have information about ages. So we may need to extract that information from the HTML pages of CEOs, again from PD Wikipedia. The first two sources are already well-structured and the third is more complicated. We'll start with just loading the data. The simplest way that people e export data is comma-separated values, which is .csv. Over here, there is a line of text for each row with commas between attribute values. There is some variation as to whether the names of the columns are provided. If they are frequently, if they are, frequently they are in the first row of the file. There is also an issue of what to do about commas that are part of the value of the field. So you will have to look at the Python handbook for how to specify what type of CSV file you are working with. Now we obtained a list of CEOs from Wikipedia. The HTML, HTML shown has a table with information we need, the company name, the CEO, interim CEO, etc. There is one of these for each of the companies. This is useful because the pandas read HTML comment takes an HTTP address and returns a list of tables as data frames. Having looked up the Wikipedia page, we know it is the first table on the page and therefore specify the zero, the index zero table as the data frame of interest. So here it is the result of the read HTML comment. You can see that this is a data frame with company and executive, presumably the CEO. And there are some funny things in the data frame, for example, interim CEO bracket one, where the bracket one probably is the reference to the source of the information. So we might need to fix it later which is the task for data cleaning. 
We will also need to use the name of the executive to find their Wikipedia page and extract information about where they were born, but that is very easy. Very easy so far, but it gets harder. So another easy case, which we will not be using for the example, is if the data you want is in a SQL database. The pandas gives you the ability to easily move data between a database and the data frame. For this class, we will often use SQLit, which is a lightweight database, one that you would use as a personal database rather than the one serving 100 users. For a large number of users, you would use MySQL or any other relational database management systems. To talk to a database, you first connect to it. You can then put a data frame into the database using to SQL and get a data frame out of the database by querying in it. With the to SQL command, you specify the name of the table, the connection to the database, whether you want to override it, override the table if it already exists, and whether you want to save the index number from the data frame as a field in the database relation. In our case, the index is not useful, so we use index equals false. With the read SQL query command, you specify a query and the connection. The star means all. So this query returns all columns of all rows of the table. And the result is put into data frame. So that's the story so far. If the data is structured, acquiring it is fairly easy. And now we are going to look, take a look at what happens if the data is not so easy to import.